Guys, welcome to Spokane Valley Archery where we're shooting broadheads today. Talk about this new sight from Ultraview, the UV slider. So I wanna break it down today, go through the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly, just to see what this thing can do as we're gonna max it out and see how far we can actually get out of it with that little bottom bonus pin. As a little bonus to this video. First impressions, straight out the box. Very clean, simple design. Everything ergonomically right in front of you and packaged in a way where it doesn't feel like things are gonna fall apart. Looks very good at a glance, but we're gonna get this thing on the bow, set up, run it through the gamut a little bit and get you some more formal opinions. Now, I was left unsupervised to get this thing set up. And you can bet your ass that I wasn't about to use a QR code or the directions that were right in front of me and nicely laid out if a person wanted to use them. I was gonna get this thing on the old fashioned way without directions. And if we're being honest, I'm not that mechanically inclined. So this is a good test of how hard it is to truly set one of these up. All in all, I would say it was a pretty simple and straightforward installation. The Picatinny rail mounted straight up to my bow, got some levels on my string, made sure everything was level and square, and I took to the indoor range to get my 20 yard mark set, just so I knew my sight was in the ballpark. And I could take it outside and was ready to start getting a proper sight tape set up. Getting this whole sight tape kind of dialed in. Getting the first sight tape on. I always call the first sight tape like you date it, you don't marry it because I think it's easier to get your sight tape on and then compare your marks. As you shoot it for a week or two, it's a little more precise. But I think I'm to the point where we can get that first sight tape on. Check it out. I was aiming at this orange and these are my last two shots. Right here. Out here grinding at home in the rain for you guys. Leave a like for that. Here's my friend Ash at the range. She's also rocking. What do, you, what do you like? What's your favorite part about it so far? So far, I think my favorite part is definitely how like easy adjustments, like up and down, left and right, like off the get go, super easy. The fine tuning on it, it's pretty cool. So. Isn't that wheel super clean? Yeah, it's super, super clean. Definitely my favorite. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to be on your site for the season? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. I'm going after Whitetail this year and maybe an elk. We'll see what happens, well, but that's on. I know, right? <laughs> get it. <laughs> yes, get it. But yep, it's a good one. Having the rail be micro adjust is pretty sweet. So I set my rail level in the vise. You know, Josh would always say shoot it in because ultimately that's what's most important that your arrows stack vertically from like, you know, 20 to 90 or however far you can shoot that those arrows hit vertically. And sure enough, my arrows were hitting maybe six inches left at 90. So I moved my rail over a little bit and now my point of impact's all stacked up. So the micro adjust rails, that's, that's pretty sweet. Probably my first most favorite feature on this is this dial is money. It is buttery smooth and it does stop in place. I'm into that. I actually do think I would make this little pop lock, I would make it a little longer. Maybe that's just for my larger handed friends. And having an override on it, I think is probably the smartest thing that I've heard about this whole design. Because in the heat of the moment, there's some chance you're gonna crank on that wheel, whether it's locked or not. And the fact that you can move it and not strip it out, I think that's a pretty big deal. We're gonna rip a few shots today and uh, talk our way through the course and the sight as we go. Ooh.
caught that line. All right, let's air it out for a second. The overwhelming elephant in the room, internet whiplash, is it's a $600 bow sight. And that's a lot. It's at the top tier of bow sights. That's ultimately a choice you have to make if that's something you're willing to spend money on. In a good, better, best kind of world, this does sit in the best category. Now, my request for manufacturers, my challenge to manufacturers, to UltraView, or anybody that's willing to do it, is get us a bare bones version of this for half the cost. Ultimately, when you drop cost, you typically drop features, but if there was a way to manufacture something that was bare bones, had the features, but didn't have maybe all of the fine details, that would be cool. Let's talk more about this site, the good and the bad. How you adjust these pins in the back, you crack a screw and you move them. You can get your pins to where you want them. It is precise in that you only have to kind of set it up once. It, it's not a micro adjust where there's a click to adjust it. It would be cool if there was some kind of click to adjust on those pins. Maybe in a V2 version, we can get a little micro adjust on those. Middle pin is fixed. So you get your middle pin set where you want it and then adjust your top and bottom. I got it set up for 20, 30, 40, which I find to be super practical for hunting distances. They went with white around the outside of the scope here. White's the color I've been using all of this year and I think it's the most practical. It seems to perform really well in low light and I like that. It comes with the stock lights in the pins and if it's illegal where you are, you can just swap this out and that comes with the site too. So I kind of like that. I'm gonna shoot some downhill, get some third access, check my third access and uh, see where we are. One thing I should mention is lateral adjustment, windage. When I was setting it up, I moved all the way out as far as my site could move to the left. And I probably had three or four inches of clearance at 20. So there wasn't a ton of play. I worry about that a little bit with Hoyts. If you're a fellow Hoyt shooter, there was enough and like just enough wiggle room. Maybe if you shot differently or whatever, it could be cutting you tight and then you'd have to find a way to shim it over. Just food for thought. There was enough room though, so I'm kind of being a little bit nitpicky. On the outside of the tape, I did just leave my sight in marks. I run my actual tape on the inside. If you did want to run dual tapes, they don't send you dual tapes. They just send single tape. The dual tape thing, I think that's more of like, do you want to run it on the inside or run it on the outside? Or get yourself a second yardage book, maybe dual tape it. I've always ran it on the inside, liked it on the inside. I got no, no real qualms about that. One feature I like but don't love is the windage. Your micro windage is absolutely money design. This thing just pops out for you. And then you can rack it forward or rack it backward. A couple clicks forward, a couple clicks backward. But compared to other sites, it just doesn't have that, that ratchety type feel. You can feel the clicks, but they're soft. It's not like step, 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 step. A little, you know, a little. You know what I'm saying? Just like a ratchet. One of the most satisfying things ever when, when it makes that. When you can feel it, you know what I'm talking about. 48 yards uphill. That was absolutely money. And I haven't had to fidget with my third axis, which is kind of nice. That's looking good in the neighborhood. Really in about these last couple days, made a couple small changes and I'm starting to shoot my bows. I'm trending like so well, I almost don't want to jinx it. A Little bit of a grand finale. We're gonna see how far we can stretch this out. I'm starting at 120 and I think, I think I can go top pin from 120. It's pretty sick. Plenty of room for top pin 120. I'm in the foam, I can't really see it. We'll just step it back and see what happens. I can get 130 right here. So I'm gonna go bottom pin, not my bonus pin, 
my bottom green pin at 130. Still in the foam. I can't get that much more range out here. We're gonna try like a final couple bonus shots here and see what happens. This is as far as I've ever stretched it out here at the range. We can get 158, just like, I'm shooting through some stuff, but the arrow will arc over it. This is pretty much an educated guess here. We'll see what happens. It went over his back? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna step back more. Let's see what happens. That looked good. I'm gonna try it once more and aim where I should aim. That was money. Did that come down short too? Dang. All right. All right, thanks for spotting. Oh, here it is. Oh, that's one. Well, that's two. Three. Definitely trending left. Four, five, and six. If you would have told me I was gonna recover all six of those arrows, I would have said no way. Bottom pin, bonus pin, roughly a 160 pin, which is pretty sick. So 25 yards off my bottom. I think the UltraView slider is a neat product. I'm glad to see UltraView innovating. Innovation's good for all of us. Pushing the boundaries is good for us. And it doesn't feel like a Gen 1 product, which I really, really appreciate. It means they put their time and energy into getting it right. I guess from here, time will tell. Durability, you know, quirks, things that might come up over the course of time. Let's leave it at that. I would say check it out if it's something you're interested in. It's a good, clean product, simple design. Subscribe to the channel, guys. That means a lot. We're going to do a big bash here once we hit 100,000 subscribers. Get everyone here, shoot their bows, do something awesome at Spokane Valley Archery. That's a wrap. Let me know what you think. Hunting season's around the corner. Hunt hard, hunt every day like it's your last, and um, enjoy it. You only get so many opening days. I will catch you back for the next one.